So yesterday you guys asked a bunch of really good questions on Instagram, so I figured I might as well make this into a YouTube video, expand on these questions a little bit more, and give you guys a ton of value in a short amount of time. So I'm gonna speed through these, give you guys a bunch of value, like I said, that you guys can implement into your workouts, into your lives, and everything in between. So with that said, first question was biggest shooting miss. Number one, it's just reps. A lot of players believe, hey, I just need to shoot 500 to 1,000 shots every single day. As long as you do that, you are going to be a good shooter. That is just simply not the case. There's millions of players around the world that are doing that, that are not becoming good shooters, and they are not getting to the next level. So it's not the reps that you're putting in, but what you're getting out of those reps. Number two is shoot the same exact shot every single time. A lot of people believe you need to have the same perfect form no matter how you are shooting, whether you're shooting a fadeaway, whether you're shooting a catch and shoot three, whether you're shooting a contested mid-range, your form is going to change. Simple as that. It's not going to be the same perfect technique every time. It's going to need to be slightly altered depending on the situation. If you're shooting from deeper, your shot pocket's gonna be a little lower. If you're shooting in mid-range, it might be a little bit higher. If you were shooting with a contest, it might be a little bit quicker. If you were shooting wide open, it might be a little bit slower. So the key is not to practice the same perfect technique, but be able to get the perfect outcome with a different, slightly different technique every time. Number two, shooting machine workout easy, do something different every single rep, don't repeat the same thing or the same shot from the same spot, go for an hour straight. Number three, is swimming consistently good for basketball? You could take this question for tennis, for boxing, it doesn't really matter. If you do anything too much, it's probably not good because it's taking time away from actually getting better at basketball, but it can be good cross training. So every now and then it could be good for conditioning, but if you're swimming, three, four, five times a week, it's probably not great because you're taking time away from actually getting better at the skill of basketball. Question number four, what's good for post-basketball recovery, compression boots, certain foods, etc. The best thing that you guys can do is get eight to nine hours of sleep. Don't look at your phone per, per se an hour before you go to bed. Don't eat three hours before you go to bed. Eat a proper meal after that you guys hoop, balanced meal with carbs, proteins, fats, real food, not eating McDonald's, not eating Wendy's and bullshit like that. And just try to do things that you enjoy outside of playing basketball. These are probably the simplest and the best things that you can do to recover and most of you guys aren't doing. So check that box first before you worry about all these different recovery tools, massage guns, compression boots, all that kind of stuff. Next question, how to successfully walk onto a college basketball team, uh, be a college level basketball player, be able to shoot at an extremely high level, be an athlete, be able to defend, be able to handle the basketball. As long as you are actually up to par, you have a chance. A lot of people ask these questions, want to do certain things like this, and they're just not at that level, so your chances are slim to none. Make sure you are at that quality of a player before you try to go walk onto that team. Simple answer. Next question, tools for effective time management. This is great for you guys as players, trainers, coaches, doesn't matter. There is a rule called Parkinson's Law, which I will give you guys the exact quote so I don't butcher it. Work expands so as to fill the time available for it. This is why I tell players all the time, be in the gym for 90 minutes and then get out. So if you give yourself a week to complete a task, it's going to take you a week. This is why when you guys get a task for school, you guys are going to do it at the last minute. When in reality, if you just said, hey, I'm gonna give myself two hours, you can complete it. This is exactly why I say, get in the gym for 90 minutes. You're going to be productive in those 90 minutes versus if you give yourself four hours, you'll complete the same amount of work, but in more time. So just give yourself less time, give yourself a hard due date, give yourself a certain amount of time to complete a task and then be done with it. So if you're trying to create say a time management for whatever it is that you guys are doing, if you guys are in school or train or whatever, give yourself a time block. Hey, 30 minutes to complete this task, 30 minutes to do this and then move on. Don't just say, hey, I'm going to complete it whenever because again, you're going to draw it out. So that is a simple answer for time management. Use a to-do list, write it out the night before, use a calendar, all of that kind of stuff. Don't just go with the flow of things and do it whenever you feel like it. Next question is how do you create passing drills with only two people that challenges a college point guard? Hit a moving target while you are also on the move, off the dribble, and things like that. So if you guys are standing there passing to each other stationary, that is doing absolutely nothing. So we did a passing video, which we will kind of overlay here. You start corner, teammate starts corner, you run this way, he runs that way, you're hitting moving target. You can work on your passing off the dribble, you can work on your shooting, you can work on a million different combinations of that where you're moving in one direction, he's moving in another, and you're just trying to be able to hit the target as accurately as you can, and then your partner can get some shooting reps, and you guys just constantly go back and forth like that. So that is the simplest way to do it. Obviously, it's very tough because you don't have defenders, you're not really reading anything, but best case scenario is you are hitting a moving target while you are also moving. That is the most game realistic that you guys can possibly do. How to get an elite handle, A, become faster, become quicker, become better at decelerating, be stronger, play against defense, improve the actual qualities of your ball handling. Most people work on one or the other. They do a lot of stationary stuff. They try to work on certain qualities, but they don't get any better physically. They don't get any better mentally where they have the IQ and know what to do, how to get to certain spots on the floor, how to manipulate the defender. And then a lot of people don't work on being able to actually read the defender. So they are effective making moves, knowing when to do all of these things. It is a complete process. We've also made a video on this, how to build out an entire handle. So I will link that up here somewhere. 
You guys can watch that after. Quote you live by every day. This is a good one. I have it tattooed on my arm. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. That's a good one. I would say I try to live by that every day. Marcus Aurelius. Next question. If you had to choose between being a better shooter or a better ball handler, which one would it be? I would choose both, especially for younger players. But obviously, if you guys are older, say you're a high school player, college player, and you want to figure out what you should improve on, it all kind of depends on your role. If you guys are a point guard who has a pretty good handle, but you cannot shoot at all, I would say I would prioritize that. Figure out whatever it is that, hey, if I get really good at this thing, will give me the best chances to get to the next level or to get playing time and focus solely on that. I think a lot of players, which I say all the time, get a little bit better at everything, a little bit better at ball handling, a little bit better at shooting, so they don't become great at anything and it doesn't differentiate you from any other players, which doesn't get you playing time or get you those contracts or get you that scholarship. So whatever is going to give you the best chance to do that, I would focus solely on that. Usually I'm going to pick shooting for most players, it's the most applicable, but for some of you guys, it may be ball handling becoming a true point guard and then getting to the next level then developing your shooting once you get there how do you feel about kids under 12 years old playing AAU all year round absolutely terrible <laughs> for a couple different reasons number one yes I love kids playing but it is very structured play it's all five on five so the worst kids on the team are rarely ever going to get better because they're always the last kid in they're not touching the ball they're just kind of thrown into the corner they're just not touching the ball they're not getting reps they're not even really involved in the play number two is a lot of the coaches that are coaching these AU things are part-time coaches they teach for a living and they do this for the living so they don't actually get professional development like they would going to train and do things like that so they're constantly playing they don't get time for development they don't get time for unstructured play I think most kids these days their schedules are absolutely too packed so they don't have time to just be a kid to go outside play at the park climb on the jungle gym play tag with their friends and develop a lot of these motor patterns that are gonna be crucial as they get older. So if I was able to come in and create the rules for AAU, I would say you shouldn't be allowed to play until you guys are at least 12 years old. Up, up until then, there's really no point. Most kids are going to play AAU for development, but they're not even developing, so what is the point? And you are getting coached by people who coach part-time, don't take it seriously, or just parents, which is no knock to them, because again, I appreciate the passion you have for trying to help kids, but at the end of the day, you're just not really able to do much with them. So that's what I would say, no AAU until you're at least really 14 years old. Next question, should I keep shooting in game even though my form is bad? No, fix your shot. Like I said in the beginning, just because you're getting tons of reps with a bad shot doesn't mean you're gonna become a good shooter. I would take time, get away from playing games for three months, focus solely on fixing your shot. We have an entire course on this. I fixed hundreds of shots before, so if you guys are interested in that, link that down below. But even if you don't use that, Figure out what it is you need to fix on your shot. Focus on one thing at a time and work solely on that until you fix it. Or you're gonna end up going the next three years without being able to ever shoot and you're never gonna get better. So yeah, that's what I would say. What's a good way to challenge a really good three-point shooter in one hour getting up a good amount of shots? A, change up the rep every single time. Change the distance. You can add certain things like you have to swoosh it for it to count. I would add defense. You can do things where they have to close their eyes until they're getting into the shot to challenge their visual perception. I would add in audio cues and things like that. These are all super simple ways to add difficulty. Depending on how good the player is, you can just increase all of these to make it more difficult. You have to make X amount in a row. You can challenge them with time. All of these things are going to add a little bit of pressure, add some variability, add some challenge. To that player and help them get better last question how do you build more confidence we've touched on this before you have to challenge yourself in different ways if you're constantly doing things people always say oh confidence is built through reps that i would say that is false confidence is built through doing difficult things overcoming them becoming better and actually believing in yourself so you sitting in the gym in an empty gym by yourself putting up thousands of shots is not necessarily going to build confidence going to get your whooped every single day at the court putting in insane amounts of work where you're playing against defense every single day getting cut by a team working your ass off making the team going to do things that you didn't believe that you can do that's uncomfortable for you and constantly just getting over the hump of that is what's really going to build confidence I've seen numerous players who put up thousands of reps every single day and they're just not confident. I've seen players that have come in here that are not confident. They play against defense every single day. They are challenged, they struggle, they overcome it, and then they get better and they see that improvement through that struggle, and then they actually leave the gym feeling confident. So there's a lot of different ways that confidence is obviously built, but in short, I would say that that's how it's built. Do difficult things, get over it, challenge yourself outside of basketball, go try to run a marathon, go try to do a 24 hour fast, challenge yourself mentally, be able to overcome that and be like, oh wow, I can do more things than I thought I could do. That's how you're gonna build confidence. So hopefully that helped you guys. If it did, as always, like, comment, subscribe. We really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video soon. Peace.